Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Kepser, and I am your MC for today's press conference. Bonjour à tous. Merci de nous joindre aujourd'hui. Je m'appelle Kepser, et je suis votre MC pour cette conférence de presse. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which we gather today is the unceded traditional territory of the Algonquin and Shabé people. J'aimerais commencer par reconnaître que la terre sur laquelle nous nous réunissons aujourd'hui est le territoire traditionnel non cédé du peuple algonquin Anishinaabe. Our first speaker is the member for Pierre Van Dollar Montreal, uh, Mr. Samir Zberi. MP Zberi is the sponsor of the motion M62 on Uyghur refugee resettlement. He's also the chair of the Subcommittee on International Human Rights and uh, the co-chair of the Canada Uyghur Parliamentary Friendship Group. Notre premier intervenant est le député de Pierrefonds de l'Art Montréal, M. Samir Zubéry. Le député Zubéry est le parrain de la motion M62 sur la réinstallation des Uyghurs euh, au Canada. Il est également président du sous-comité des droits humains euh, ainsi que la, le groupe président de la, du groupe d'amitié parlementaire Canada Uyghur. S'il vous plaît, monsieur. Merci, Kupser. Merci tout le monde d'être ici aujourd'hui. What just happened was historic. This was the first time that cabinet pronounced itself on the issue of the Uyghur. This is the first time that we have seen what we saw today, all parties, all parliamentarians coming together to support the Uyghur people. This is historic, not only for Canada, but for the international community, for human rights, our human family. What's happening to the Uyghur people is unacceptable. Michel Bachelet, the former commissioner of, uh, for the UN, UN Commissioner for Human Rights, said that what's happening to the Uyghur people can, may mount to international crimes, including crimes against humanity. The moment that that threshold is met, there is an, an obligation on countries to protect those vulnerable people. At this time, Canada is meeting the moment by saying clearly, we will resettle 10,000 Uyghur in third countries as of 2024, over two years. This was done jointly. Everyone in the House of Commons worked for this. There was an am amendment from the NDP that ensured that refugees would be resettled in Canada to the same numbers and that we would add through this program additional numbers. We, I, have been working with fellow parliamentarians over the course of the last three years from all parties through the, Uyghur, through the Canada Uyghur Friendship Group, with parliamentarians in the Senate and the House of Commons. This is common cause. The Wilson Center report said that almost 1,600 Uyghurs documented, it's known, 1,600 individuals over the last years have been refooled or detained at the Baha'is of China in third countries. That's why this motion is so important. I am proud of our government. I don't like using the word proud often, but I am proud of the Prime Minister for supporting this motion, for the Cabinet for supporting this motion, and of parliamentarians for all parties for supporting this motion. This is an important moment today where we are standing together as one. We have hard work to do ahead of us. We will do this work. The intent is clear. We will do it, we must do it. I want to sincerely thank everyone in this country who has advocated for the respect of the Uyghur people and other Turkic minorities who are facing grave and serious human rights concerns. Thank you, merci beaucoup. Donc, uh, just pour un Petit intervention en français. Je suis fier que notre cabinet et notre premier ministre a aujourd'hui soutenir la motion M62. Cette motion est importante pour le Canada, mais aussi pour la communauté internationale, incluant les peuples uyghurs. C'est un, un signal clair qu'on n'accepte pas human rights abuses. On n'accepte pas les abus de, de droits humains contre les peuples Uyghurs. Nous sommes ensemble, nous sommes unis aujourd'hui pour protéger ces peuples et pour créer un programme 
pour, pour um, uh, to welcome uh, 10 000 Uyghurs dès que 2024. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, uh, député Zuberi. Thank you so much, uh, MP Zuberi. Our second speaker is a special guest from Germany, Mr. Dolko Naysa, the president of the World Waker Congress. Notre deuxième intervenant est un invité spécial d'Allemagne, M. Dolko Naysa, du président du Congrès mondial Uyghur. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I would like to thank you all for coming to this important press conference, following the important vote on the motion M622 tablet by good friends, parliament member, member Samuel Zubair. When this is initiative started last year, when we are hopeful, but we did not expect this amount of support within the Canadian parliament, as well as from the sitting government. Thank you for giving the Uyghur as a reason to hope and seek a safe heaven. Uyghur have been living in a constant state of fear since the Chinese government mass arrested or relatives disappeared them and locked them up in the concentration camps. Today, at least three million Uyghur, Kazakh, and other Turkish-speaking people are in the camp, and we don't know how many have died. Everything that is unique about the Uyghur people is under attack. Our language, culture, religious, history, ethnic identity. Chinese government is fragmenting our society, imprisoning or disappearing prominent Uyghurs, and cutting the social ties between us. CCP is indoctrinating young generation to forsake their ethnicity, religion, and culture, and to only to be loyal to the CCP. By trying to directly reduce the Uyghur birth rate, the Chinese government is trying to destroy us physically. But it not, does not stop here. Those seeking refugees outside have been living on the run seeking their lives escape, trendly and the violent persecution. Some have been stranded in some countries for more than five years, still as the intimidate risk of deportation. Today, this motion is in their honor. We have not forgotten you. We will fight for your rights. This is exactly the message that is sent by all parliament members who vote in favor of, of, of M62 motion. Not only does it give us hope, but it also gives us the courage to continue fighting and speaking out. It is now up to the government to act on it and the allocated resource to implement it, proactive resettlement program to expedite to enter of 10,000 Uyghur refugees, Uyghurs, and other Turk Muslim refugees. I therefore thank all of your support to M62 on behalf of the global Uyghur community. I especially thank Prime Minister and the Cabinet and all Parliament members and the even opposition party members. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dokunaisa. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Dokunaisa. Now I would like to introduce Mrs. Margaret McGuay Johnson to say a few words. She is a senior fellow with the Graduate School of Public and International Affairs at the University of Ottawa. J'aimerais maintenant vous présenter Madame Margaret McGuay Johnson pour nous dire quelques mots. Elle est agrégée supérieure de recherche à l'École supérieure d'affaires publiques et internationales à l'Université d'Ottawa. S'il vous plaît. Good afternoon. In 37 years as a Canadian public servant and 10 years as an academic, I have never been more proud of our country, our parliament, and our government than I am today. The vote in the House gives Canadians a real voice and real action to recognize the genocide being perpetrated against the Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims. 
Thousands have already been returned to China from an other countries due to threats against their family members or Beijing's pressure on countries themselves to deport them back to China. Those still in exile are not able to work or send their kids to school in that country because they escaped without documentation. In effect, they're stateless. Canadians want to be part of the solution and give them a home, as we have done for Vietnamese, Syrians, and most recently for the Ukrainians. I would like to re recognize the leadership of Member of Parliament Samir Zuberi. This is the power of one MP who has a vision, and also his Bloc Québécois, Alexis Brunel Dusep, who has both been laser focused on this initiative to make a real difference for real people who are in dire need of help. Their teamwork has been exceptional. I would add that every member of parliament who spoke in the House on this motion, both in October and on Monday, spoke eloquently and often from very powerful, heartfelt emotions. I want to thank Dolkan Issa and Omar Kanat for coming to Ottawa for this important occasion. And I would also like to thank Mehmet Toti and Kayum Mazinov, who have been super effective leaders for the Uyghur community, not just in Canada, but across the globe. I would also like to thank, in advance, the many Canadian public servants in Immigration, Refugees and C Citizenship Canada, in Global Affairs Canada, in Department of Finance and other departments who will make this initiative happen. They will design the program to resettle uh, Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims in Canada and will ensure through diplomatic channels that they will be able to arrive safely. There's a lot of work ahead and it's now on an accelerated schedule, but I know that Canadian public servants are committed to people when they need it most. Finally, I would like to recognize the Prime Minister, the Cabinet and the government for their uh, contribution to this uh, unanimous vote today and for acknowledging the challenges that China is presenting, not just to Canada, but to the world. I say that as someone who was a friend of China for 40 years, but China has changed under Xi Jinping, and the government is recognizing this and is acting through policies like its new Indo-Pacific strategy that asserts the universal human rights of the Uyghurs. The vote today is a loud Canadian voice for human rights in China and safety for Uyghurs and other Turkic Muslims. Thank you. Thank you, Professor McGuay Johnson. Merci, Professor McGuay Johnson. Finally, uh, we have Mr. Mehmet Torti. He is the executive director of the Human uh, Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project and the director of the Law Committee at the World Uyghur Congress. Notre prochain intervenant est Monsieur Mehmet Torti, le directeur exécutif de Uyghur Rights Advocacy Project et le directeur du Comité du droit au Congrès mondial Uyghur. Please. Thank you, and merci beaucoup. Uh, yeah, this is a historic day, not uh, only for all Uyghurs across uh, the globe, at the same time for Uyghurs in East Turkestan, and uh, for our country, for our political leaders, parliament and the government, at the same time for China as well, because message is clear and is strong and this message will resonate not only in China and in Canada, at the same time, it will resonate around the world as well. And for that reason, I would like to express my deepest, deepest appreciation for the leadership of my dear friend, MP Samir Zuberi, and his colleagues, and the member of <coughs> Uyghur Parliamentary Friendship Group, at the same time, all political leaders, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, and the cabinet members. This uh, motion came a long way, and uh, parliamentary committees studied the situation of Uyghurs since 2018. They held dozens of hearings and heard experts around the world and the victim testimonies and uh, victims, and also Uyghur Canadians. And the parliamentary committees issued report and recommendations to the government. And this motion reflected the will of the parliament. And today, with the vote, the unanimous vote, it is the reflection of the will of all Canadians. And for that reason, I'm grateful. And also, I am more proud than ever 
to choose this country as my home and home country to live forever in our next generation. And uh, I would like to mention uh, a couple of things. And this is just the beginning. And we have to uh, acknowledge that. This is the beginning of a long journey. And as Uyghur organization and the World Uyghur Congress and the other uh, responsible stakeholders, we will work closely with the government of Canada and Immigration Canada. We provide all logistic support whenever and whatever is needed. And we, we will provide the much needed help for those vulnerable communities. And I would like to say the one message to China. Just I received phone call on January 16th from Chinese security officials with the presence of my cousin. And I learned that my two sisters already died in concentration camps and my three brothers disappeared. And the, my mother also died and also they held my cousin under the hospital bed and they called me just to stop this initiative. And many people sacrificed. This is not easy. Doing advocacy against China is not easy. And many of our community members in Canada, Canadian, Uyghur Canadians, they sacrificed their family members just to speak up. And for that reason, we value this motion and we value the will of the Canadian parliament and the government. And so we do whatever we can to assist, to make this whole process as smooth as possible, as quick as possible. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mehmet Torté. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Mehmet Torté. We will now proceed to questions. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions. Are there questions in the room? Uh, y a des questions dans la salle? Uh, hi there, uh, Dylan Robertson from the Canadian Press. A question for Mr. Saberi. Uh, the motion today is non-binding just by nature of it being a private member's motion. Mm. I'm just curious if you've had any uh, assurance from the cabinet that they'll follow through with what's been pledged today. Mm. What's really important about this motion today is that each and every member voted for it in name, including the prime minister. This is a clear intent to see this program, to make this happen. This is a promise to the Canadian people, to the international community, that we will do this. This is our promise to Canada and Canadians. We will do this. We're having some issues with the Afghanistan resettlement right now. I'm just wondering if you expect it to, to stick with the timeline of the two years starting in 24, just given the issues we're having right now with the Afghanistan, the mm. 40,000. I'm confident that we will get this started by 2024. I'm always ambitious, and I will push for it to start as soon as possible. I give a slight bit of flexibility, but I will push for people to be saved without any delay. People are vulnerable right now. We must do something. This started in 2018. We're now 2023. I'm, not, I'm extremely impatient. I don't have any time to wait to see those who are fleeing here in Canada. We must do this without delay. If I could just uh, throw in a third question, mm -hmm. do you have any indication from the minister or the department about what this might actually look like once it does get going? Or uh, do you have your own sort of vision? Is it more like the Syrian or the Afghanistan resettlement? Have they given you any kind of a sense of what it might look like? I expect this to be, to be done. A promise was made. I intend on seeing that it's fulfilled. I will work until the 10,000 Uyghur people are here in Canada and other Turkic minorities. Until that point, I will stop. But for me, it doesn't stop with this motion. I will continue to campaign until the 10,000 are here. I'll take some questions online. Uh, first question is from Stephen Chase. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, can you guys hear me? Good? OK. Uh, I just want to follow up on my colleague uh, uh, Dylan Robertson's question. The um, minister, sorry, there's a delay, so I hear everything afterwards. It's I'm gonna figure out how to deal with this. Uh, so the minister put out a statement uh, just after this vote passed, uh, and he said he is committed to working with members of all parties to advance the measures outlined in the motion adopted by the House of Commons. 
Now, our job is to parse words, and that's not expressly saying I'm going to bring in 10,000 Uyghurs. But what do you think he says? He, what do you take it to mean when he says he's committed to working with members of all parties to advance the measures outlined in the motion adopted by the House of Commons? I take that as clear, saying that we will do this. The minister has said so. The minister has said he will work with all of this parliament, which has, as one hand, said we want to resettle Uyghur people. This wasn't simply one, two, three parties. So this, this was every party in the House of Commons coming together. This is everybody's win today. The government is leading it, but this is everyone's win today. Each and every member that voted for this should shape, savor that moment. Each and every individual who helped make this happen should take part of this victory. This is a victory for everyone that has been involved. Those in the public, those behind the scenes, everyone involved should be taking some credit for this. And that's what the minister is saying. He is saying that he is working with everyone to make this happen. He's the executive. It will happen. Can I ask you a question as a follow-up? Um, the, the, the motion actually references the genocide motion of 2021. How did you convince cabinet members to vote for this when they skipped the uh, motion in 2021? Can you give us an idea of of what your argument was? That's a great question. And this motion of today, M62, piggybacks off of what happened in February 2021, when there was a unanimous vote to recognize in the House of Commons that what's happening to the Uyghur people is genocide. I voted for that. The majority of members in each and every party, including the Liberal Party, voted for that. I'll repeat that. A majority of Liberals voted to recognize that genocide is in fact occurring towards the Uyghur people in February 2021. At that point in time, the information that we have as an international community wasn't as fulsome as it is today. Since then, the UN Human Rights Commissioner, Michel Bachelet, actually went into Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region with a chaperone visit. Despite that chaperone visit, Despite the diplomatic language of the UN, she came with a damning finding that what is happening to the Uyghur people may rise to international crimes, including crimes against humanity. In international law, once you reach that threshold, you don't have to prove crimes against humanity. Once you reach that threshold, you have a responsibility to protect that doctrine we in this country help to develop. That doctrine means that we must act we are acting now. Let's, I don't want to get into a debate about the legal definition of genocide, the political definition of genocide. What matters to me is that we help people concretely. It's not a theoretical conversation I want to have. I want to have a conversation of action. I'm focused on resettling 10,000 Uyghur and other Turkmen minorities here in Canada to help people fleeing persecution. What I personally believe is a legal definition of genocide. What most of my colleagues in the Commons believe is a legal defini defini definition of genocide. What some might say maybe only amounts to crimes against humanity, which is not a light term. That's a serious accusation. I want to see action. I'm focused on action, not on theoretical conversations. We'll leave that to the lawyers and the jurists in the next 10 years to determine that, and the historians, concretely, definitively. And we have a last question online, Jalil Kashgari. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, but go ahead. Hello? Hello? We can hear you. OK. Uh, first, thank you. Uh, I have uh, two questions. Uh, my question, uh, is there any uh, implementation concern with uh, resettling 10,000 Uyghurs in Canada within a given time frame? And the second one, is there anything that the local Uyghur Canadian groups can do to ease implementation concern or any uh, services we can provide to ease for potential refugees? I don't see concerns around this motion. I worked, as you can see, 
across party lines with the government to make this happen. We are united today, clearly, in a clear expression, knowing what we're doing, looking directly at everyone involved, friend and those who are not so friendly, saying we will do this. So I do not see uh, any, any issue with us doing this. We have committed to it, we will do it. For the community, I think it's important for the community to continue to be brave and to continue to speak up. What's happening today is only possible because people have spoken up. If people remain silent in the face of oppression, we, will not, we would not be here today. It's critical that can, people continue to speak up and to educate us. The Uyghur community in Canada is very small, but it has been brave. It's been brave to speak and to share the human tragedies that are happening of women being forcibly sterilized so that the IUD device in the womb, when it's removed, it actually doesn't only get removed, but the whole uterus has to be removed. This is an abomination. Children in the hundreds of thousands being permanently separated, permanently from their families, indoctrinated, losing their identity, who they are. It's unacceptable in 2023 that this is happening on the face of this earth. We have said after World War II and many times since, never again. This is happening now, we must act now, we are acting. Okay, and so that's all the time we have. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Merci tout le monde.